Hello, I would like to thank the CCMC for making all their space weather models available to the public. However, it makes me sad when I see that the readings which we can see at ISWA SWMF plus RCM magnetosphere cuts are being edited all the time. In my previous movie I've recorded how the SWMF monitors are being censored in the most critical moments. That's why I've decided to request another run of the SWMF plus RCM model on the CCMC page. Now I can proudly present you the images of magnetosphere being affected by multiple density spikes and rapid changes of IMF magnetic orientations. But before I will show you the images, I need to discuss the space weather conditions from the day of 26 of July. Although the KP index was low during the entire day and it reached only two points, during this time Earth was affected by something what looks like a coronal whole stream frontal density wave. What was followed soon after by a stream of fast solar wind. Velocity jumped to 400 km per second. I am not sure if this event can be blamed for all the anomalies which I will show you on the SWMF readings, but I have to tell about the conditions in case that this movie is being watched by people from NASA. Ok, prepare your popcorn. For the beginning, why cut view? Now the XCAD view. And for the end, 3D field lines.
But before I will start to discuss those images, I'll have to show you the readings from ground magnetometer stations. Those ones were recorded in Norway. If we compare all the IMF disturbances with those graphs, we will notice that they fit to each other perfectly. For example, this sudden disturbance, which peak was recorded around 3 UTC, can be easily explained using the SWMF images. However, here we can see two separate impacts on of density spikes. This can be explained by the fact that the first spike didn't affect the magnetic orientation too much. In the difference to the second spike, which was making a clear boundary between sectors with different magnetic orientations. Or to say it shortly, it was like a tip of an interplanetary magnetic tsunami. The question is, what is the cause of this sudden geomagnetic disturbance? Is it the density spike or the distortion of interplanetary field lines? I think that it was the sudden change of IMF magnetic components what caused this unexpected jolt on ground magnetometer readings. Density spike was only a side effect of all those sector boundaries appearing one after another. On the 3D view, we can see nicely how the sector boundary crossing affected the behavior of some of the open magnetospheric field lines. The fact that this field line is directed in opposite direction to the rest of magnetosphere can be explained by the fact that BX component was dominating at this time in the IMF. This is what happened after the sector boundary crossing. And after some time, it came back to the previous state. But look how the sector boundary affected the backside connection with low energy field. Before the crossing, there were no visible flux tubes within the magnetotail. Now comes the crossing of sector boundary. and we have a clear backside reconnection, which forms along the BX component of IMF, so it is not a substorm. A visible flux tube forms itself and connects the plasma sphere to the sector boundary we just passed through.
but the connection is cut out by a second boundary. We can see how the closed field lines return to the current ring. However, the most interesting readings can be seen on the XCAT view. Look at the direction in which the sector boundary approaches Earth. And this is one of those situations in which I won't be able to continue until I won't add another electromagnetic field affecting Earth. Direction in which Sun rotates is opposite to the motion of this boundary. Parker's spiral doesn't work here. There is much more of interesting events which can be seen on the XCAT view, like those two boundaries which swing from side to side. Anyway, if we compare the cuts with the backside reconnections, we should notice without any problems that all those sector boundaries approaching from the left to right are very often followed by plasma outflows. I can say much more about all those readings, but let's leave them for now. Because I would like to speak about another process, which was visible on the low energy radiation belt monitors beginning from the evening of July 29. I mean the backside gusts of neutral particles. In their case, we can't talk about fluxes, as they are almost unaffected by the magnetic forces, what makes them hard to track on magnetosphere monitors. Again, those readings can't be explained without the additional field, which I've called low energy field, as those particles are moving against the solar wind, and they are capable to blow the magnetopause in opposite direction. What happened in March 2012? Neutral particles can easily pass through a radiation belt and only particles at lowest energy bands will be affected. What means that they simply pass through our defenses and made a direct impact with the atmosphere. <laughs> 